Hello and welcome to the Grade 1 Math Expressions Scope and Sequence Overview for Cycle 1 of the 2019-20 school year. I'm going to spend the next several minutes explaining for you, to you some of the key features of this document, paying particular attention to ways that it is different from last year. You've probably noticed that it has a lot more detail than in the past. My hope is that this detail is helpful, but I am absolutely open to feedback and suggestions and questions at any time. You can always reach the entire math team at math at the last day. Okay, so this first page looks exactly like it did last year. Um, it's broken, it takes the entire year and breaks it into these four benchmark cycles. This lays out for you on these dates, what are the units that you're teaching? It's a good overview of the entire year, which is especially helpful because the detailed pages that follow only cover cycle one so far. That's just because it took so long to write out all the details that we haven't been able to get any further. Cycle two will be posted by October 24th. I do just wanna mention briefly a little bit about these dates because they tend to cause confusion. We created what we call benchmark cycles as a way to make sure that grades three through eight who give benchmarks have absolute clarity around what is being taught and what could be tested on that benchmark. So because the benchmark window opens on November 12th, which is a Monday, all of the content in benchmark cycle one has time to be taught by Friday, November 8th. The term isn't over. You have not done your report cards yet. This might feel like a random date, but this date is the day before the benchmark window opens. So that means that by Tuesday, November 13th, you wanna be moving on to this content. Might feel like a random day to you to move on to the next cycle, but that is what you wanna to do to make sure you're keeping pace to finish the content during this year. You don't give benchmarks in grades K to two, obviously, um, but we do create optional common assessments. Those common assessments are about three open-ended questions. Um, we've been doing for this for the last, I think, three years, but a lot of people aren't aware of them. Um, they're totally optional, open-ended questions related to the content that you're teaching in cycle one. They will be available by November 12th. Okay, next page, page two. Um, you actually have a very short list of standards. A lot of times there's multiple pages of standards here, um, but for first grade in cycle one, you are actually only teaching two standards, two PA core standards. That's what this column on the left shows. The column on the right shows the common core equivalents for those PA standards. Some schools tend to like PA, some schools tend to like common core, some schools like to be able to move between the two. What this tells me is, if I'm teaching this PA core standard, that is roughly equivalent to these two common core clusters. I'm gonna be honest with you, usually it's a one-to-one -one kind of correspondence, one PA core standard to one common core cluster. This is absolutely a kind of a rare exception that there's two that compose that single PA core standard. But that's kind of the beauty of the Common Core. It breaks things down a little bit more and gives you more detail that you don't have in Pennsylvania. So when I'm teaching this PA Core standard, if I'm not totally sure what that means, I can look over here at the A cluster and see the A1 standard and the C cluster and see the C5 and 6 standards and get more detail about what this PA Core standard looks like. So these are all the standards that you are teaching in cycle one. This doesn't mean that you'll teach them and be done with them. Math Expressions tends to teach things kind of over and over again, merge them and combine them throughout the year. The other interesting thing about this page is this bold language associated with each standard, application, conceptual, and procedural. Those words might sound familiar. They're the three aspects of rigor. And rigor is one of the three common core shifts of focus, coherence, and rigor. When we talk about rigor, we don't mean difficulty. We mean achieving this balance of procedures, concepts, and application. And you don't necessarily get a balance every single day. It's not like, okay, here's the procedure, here's the concept, here's the application. 
The idea is that over the course of a week or a month or a year, you're getting a really good balance. You're helping kids with all three aspects. This bold language is hopefully helpful because it lets you focus. It says, you know what? Not only am I not doing everything every day, but when I'm doing a certain standard, it might be more of one type of rigor than another. So if I'm doing a lesson like 10A A1, I see, okay, that's an application standard. So when I'm teaching that lesson, my focus, the questions I give students, the questions I ask students are not about, say, fluency. I'm not saying, wait, how did you add eight and six? I'm saying, well, what about this real world problem told you that you were supposed to add? What made this an addition problem? It's about the application. When I'm doing 10AC5, it's about a concept. Again, it's not about boom, 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 two, four, six. It's about understanding that I can use counting as a way to help me add. If I look across the entire cycle, it can be helpful to look for trends. I see that I have mostly conceptual. Sometimes a certain standard have a, has a mix of both, and I have just a little bit of application. Okay, so that's the standards page. Then when we keep scrolling, you come to the detailed pages. These lay out for you, for the units that you're teaching in cycle one, what's some kind of key information about them. These are the pages that look the most different from last year because a lot more detail has been added. So math expressions units are typically very long. And so to help you not be overwhelmed by the size of the units, to kind of chunk your teaching, math expressions has broken the units into big ideas. And I've created um, just some little notes with each big idea to help you focus your attention. The title get, could give you some focus, but I just thought this information could be helpful as well. So unit one is broken into one, two, two big ideas for nine total lessons. This cycle, you're also teaching unit two, which has big idea one, big idea two, big idea three, and big idea four. Unit two is a long one. It has 16 whole lessons. So again, chunking it into big ideas can help you think about a group of lessons and what's my goal and purpose for that whole group of lessons. It looks like in cycle one, you're also beginning unit three with big idea one before you come to the optional common assessment window. Just like last year, the left column shows you the range of dates allotted for each big idea. Now, usually I would do these dates by individual big ideas because big idea one was so short, I merged big ideas one and two. So you have 14 days to teach the nine lessons of unit one. That gives you a day per lesson plus five flex days. Now, we want you to use your discretion. You may decide I can skip a lesson. That's fine, you buy yourself a day. How do I use flex days? Well, at the beginning of the year, I probably use them for get to know you activities and rules and norms. I might use them to give a test, um, to do a review because I'm sick or on a field trip. I might look at a lesson and say, you know what? This is a really difficult, important lesson. I'm gonna break it into two days, one day for activity one and one day for activity two. You can use the flex days however you want. My advice, best practice, based on people I've spoken with, is not to just plow through the lessons and save the five days for the end. Use them proactively throughout. Okay, what else is new here? Let's look at the standards on the right. Last year, there were a lot more standards written over here because last year I took exactly what Math Expressions said was tagged to every lesson and I wrote it over here. So that's the thing about Math Expressions. They include a lot in each lesson to help you see the connections between concepts. It's great. It helps kids see the connections. It helps them review. It helps them learn. But I felt like if I wrote all of those standards over here, it makes it hard for you as a teacher to focus. 
Sure, maybe I'm touching on five different standards, but which standard am I really focusing on that day? So I tried to narrow down the standards that you are truly teaching, truly putting your attention on over here on the right. If at all possible, I made it one or two. Here looks like a case where I just had to say it was three. Sometimes there are a lot of lessons that all cover the same standards. If that's the case, I made the box cover all of them. There are other times, actually it looks like it didn't happen for your grade. Oh, well here's a case. Lesson 214 had these standards. 215 had this one. So I really tried to be as specific as possible so that you can really target your instruction. Again, there are often more than one per lesson, but I did narrow it down compared to what the book said. All right, the last thing I wanna highlight before I let you go is that I put a lot more detail into the description of each activity. Last year, there was just one row here that said the objective for the whole lesson. But because there's multiple activities, sometimes they didn't all relate to that objective and the objective could be misleading. I included the objective for each activity. So for activity one, students will be able to represent and solve addition story problems. This language is often taken directly from the activities objective, but a lot of times I tweaked it to make it more specific. Sometimes I felt like the objectives in the book were a little bit generic or didn't really get to the heart of the activity. After the bold objective, I just included one or two sentences of notes that I thought could help you make better sense of the activity and implement it. Reading those notes doesn't really summarize the activity for you. You still definitely have to look at the book, but I hope it gives you kind of a supplement, like you have a friend beside you helping you co-plan. So that is all the information for Math Expression Cycle 1. Again, Cycle 2 will be released by October 24th. Feel free to reach out with questions or comments to math at Villa Esti. And I hope that this is helpful and you're off to a great start to cycle one and the entire school year. Thank you.